Starting now, this is the Wood TV Live Desk. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm News 8 Digital Anchor Luke Laster here from our mobile Live Desk for another Live Desk interview here at the CEO Summit, downtown Grand Rapids at the Amway Plaza. Um, joining me now, he, uh, I'm sorry, Peter Darienzo. He is the uh, CEO of John Ball Zoo. Um, taking some time to chat with us here, tell us a little bit about what is coming here at the zoo this summer. Sir, appreciate it. How are you? Great, great. Glad to be here. Hey, In person. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's a good segue because before we get rolling here, I want to talk about that uh, camaraderie of being back in person. Last year, a virtual event. It's, it's been um, very different for everyone, every industry the past couple of years. Tell me how it is to be back in person, to see everyone face to face. There's an energy, there's a glow. A little Absolutely. Bit. You know, we're humans, we're social creatures, and you, you can't do the same thing through an email or over a phone call. Uh, being in person just amplifies our impact, so our ability to collaborate. I was looking at the list of who would be here today, I, and I saw your name come up. I just really want to know about your journey to getting into the CEO role of John Ball Zoo. How, where do you start? What did you go to school for? How do you get there? Right, my personal journey? Yeah. Okay, well, that's a, a pretty long journey. I, oh. I, I spent most of my time in the for-profit sector at uh -huh. AMC Theaters. I uh, worked my way into the world headquarters, uh, North America, food and beverage operations. That's mm -hmm. where I learned business. Uh, I then went into manufacturing, and I worked as an environmental manager. I wrote, designed, and implemented ISO 14000 programs, which is an environmental management system. Mm -hmm. My passion has always been about the environment, ecology, sustainability. So this is natural. So when I saw the opportunity to move into the zoo industry, I, I jumped at it, and that was in Kansas City. And then I came here six years ago. Uh, it's a phenomenal community to be part of. Uh, this community gets sustainability, gets the farm to market movement, uh, connection to the outdoors, connection to wildlife. It's a great place to make a difference. Having the opportunity, opportunity to tie your passion into uh, a zoo like John Ball Zoo, how is that on just a day to day to be like, man, I'm really doing this? The, I would say the biggest thing is to be able to make a difference and to be able to make a difference in your community, but also with wildlife. And zoos, particularly AZA accredited zoos like John Ball, less than 10% of zoos achieve that, Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Uh, we operate in a space where wildlife and society intersect, so those, those conflict points. So what does that mean? It means being able to improve the human condition while improving uh, outcomes for wildlife. So our conservation efforts happen all around the world, from um, multiple continents, uh, and being able to improve the human condition at the same time protecting wildlife. And then, of course, we have programs right here, right here in Michigan. So to be able to wake up every morning and make a difference. So that's why I went from for-profit to non-profit. Not that you can't do that at right. a for-profit, but. Mm -hmm. um, big summer ahead. It, summer's finally here. I mean, we're obviously seeing it outside with how hot it is and how hot right. it will be. What do we have coming up here this summer? What's something you're looking forward to that'll be at the zoo? We have two great things at the zoo. Uh, well, we have many great yeah, things, yeah. but two new things. Mm -hmm. uh, koalas. Uh, we brought koalas to, uh, to West Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, we're the only zoo in the state of Michigan with koalas. And we have a brand new habitat. And just the team at Wolverine did a phenomenal job constructing the, the koala habitat. And uh, Amway, phenomenal partnership in helping us get the koalas from San Diego to here. Mm -hmm. uh, just great community members to work with. And uh, also washed ashore art exhibit. You know, part of West Michigan's fabric is the connection to art. Mm -hmm. And y you may not need art to survive, but art allows us to thrive. And to be able to tell a story through art is very powerful. We deliver experiences that inspire the heart and inform the mind. So. Washed ashore is about plastic, about trash that's washed up onto our beaches. And then you collect that trash and then you turn it into huge pieces of art. Um, for us, it's animals. So as you walk in, there's a sturgeon, there's a giant bald eagle, and uh, kids get a kick out of seeing the art because they'll see some of similar toys that they play with, a toothbrush that washed ashore, mm -hmm. plastic bottle, and it tells us that we have to be careful what you do with your plastic. We uh, had covered both of those stories when the koalas came to John Ball Zoo and then those massive pieces of art as well. Here's a question for you. What one are you more excited about, having that exhibit or getting the koalas to see it? Oh, that's a tough <laughs> one. 
I, I, I would say the art. The art. Uh, uh, because the art touches us and how we can make a difference in our daily lives. Yeah. It tells us that single-use plastic is a problem. Yeah. And uh, we, we as an AZA Tread of Zoo, we wish there was no need, no need for zoos. So be able to tell that story so that people can make simple changes in their life uh, to reduce single-use plastic can make a difference. So good message there. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so one question I'd like to wrap up our conversations that we've been having today is what would you tell young people, young professionals, uh, whether they're a student fresh out of school or maybe someone in their first job looking to make that leap to their second job and really get their career rolling, what would you tell them? I would say, if I had to say one thing, um, well, I'd say follow your passion, but if I had to say, how, how do you do that? In today's world, you have to be a lifelong learner and you have to know how to communicate. So no matter what your degree is, uh, what you studied at school, make sure you understand how to communicate because we can only accomplish great things when we work as a team. So be able to communicate ideas. So uh, learn how to speak, learn how to be a great writer, learn how to communicate effectively in teams. And a liberal arts background is a very powerful thing. Doesn't mean you need a liberal arts degree, it just means you, you need to be willing to to keep your mind open to that. And be a lifelong learner. Uh, you rarely go to school and then you do that for the rest of your life. Like when I think of, of my own path. Mm -hmm. Now, um, my first time through school, I studied engineering and physics. And when I finally finished school, I got a degree in organizational leadership, um, which is the science side of, of management. And I've had a career in food and beverage at AMC Theaters. I've had a career in manufacturing as an environmental manager, and now I have a career at, at a zoo. Mm -hmm. So you, you won't do the same thing your whole life. So be willing to be a lifelong learner. Peter, I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a look at the Mobile Wood TV live desk. Again, been CEOs, executives, business owners here throughout the morning and early afternoon at this Wood TV live desk. Thanks for watching. We'll see you around.